Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello everyone and welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, the show that you give us questions and we deliver you answers. Yes, you probably know the format by now. And you know what? You probably even know how to get in touch with us and give us your questions. But just in case, Mr. D, can you remind them how to do it? Of course I can. All you've got to do is call 013-808-0035. That's 013-808-0035. Or you can go to propertyhub.net slash ask. Both methods will achieve the same thing. You can leave a voicemail, send us your question, and then we'll give you an answer just like we're about to for Stephen. Hi, Rob and Rob. It's Stephen here from Glasgow. I just want to say thank you very much for all the content that you guys put out. I've been investing in property for eight years, but there's so much that I've learned from your podcast, so thank you so much. There's a couple of properties that I've seen, um, and the January are coming up in auction. They seem to be quite cheap, so kind of between like 25 and like 35, 40,000 pounds. The only issue is that it's below what I can get a standard mortgage for. So I can get mortgage, but it's looking at around 7%. So I've crunched the numbers and the return on investment is still in the region of about 15 odd percent. Some of them are like 16, 17%, which is really, really good. But I'm not sure if I'm better off spending that, say 30K on a £120,000 property, which is likely to go up in value. Um, And that's what I'm really stuck on. So I've probably got about 30k to invest just now. And I'm not sure if I should go for a cheaper option or if I should use that towards a more expensive property, although I might get a lower return on investment, property might go up in value. So great to hear your thoughts. I'm not sure if I can add enough value for it to push it above the 50k threshold where most mortgages kind of start, or I don't know if the general market might kind of help it get that way. But yeah, it'd be great to hear your thoughts and see what you think. Thank you. Stephen, thank you. Really interesting question. It is interesting because I think if we had infinite money, none of us would use mortgages. If you could invest and get the return you need without exposing yourself to the hassle of mortgages and interest rate risk and things like that, you would. The reason we do use mortgages is that we don't have infinite money and using them gives our ROI a really nice boost. However, if you're getting that ROI without a mortgage, that sounds great. So all else being equal, you'd say, fantastic, go for it, get that really cheap property. However, there are some drawbacks. The first drawback is that as a massive generality, cheaper properties tend to attract tenants who can be harder work to manage. That's clearly not always the case, but it is something to be wary of because it can be the case. So you can find that they are a bit more time intensive and you can find that you're losing a higher proportion of your income in costs because the costs that you incur in maintaining a property are roughly the same, whatever the capital value of it is. The other drawback, as you've noted, is the growth potential. So again, as a general rule, with some exceptions, properties that are more expensive tend to be in better locations and properties in better locations tend to experience growth earlier in the cycle and get more of that growth. And even if they didn't, even if every property in Scotland went up by 10%, 10% of a bigger number is higher than 10% of a smaller number. That's what leverage does for you and why it magnifies your returns. So taking all of that into account, what should you do? Well, I can't tell you because it really comes down to what your motivations are right now. If you're looking for the highest absolute return over a reasonably long period of time, then it's likely that going for a more expensive property will be a better move. Because you've got that higher growth potential with the benefits of leverage, you'll probably find that even though you're getting a lower rental return month to month, your overall return ends up being higher. However, if it's more important to you right now to have more money in your pocket each month because that allows you to do something meaningful like cut down your hours at work or something like that, then that might be more important to you. That might be the way to go. So no clear answer, but thank you for the question. And I hope going through some of those factors involved will help you get closer to making a decision. Loads of value there, Stephen. Let's get our next question in now from Osman. See if I can set up up to the plate. Hi, Rob and Rob. This is Osman from Dubai. Firstly, thank you ever so much for exceptional content. I listen every week and your advice and encouragement has really been the catalyst behind my first buy-to-let purchase that I made early this year. Absolutely love the variety of your shows and coverage of wider topics such as macroeconomy and mindset. I, I really only wish I stumbled across this podcast and Rob D's books in my 20s. 
Now, my question relates to letting agents. What's the average fee for a fully managed service? I've had three quotations all around the 13 to 14 percent mark, which feels a little heavy. I only have the one property so far, so conscious of how much of a discount I can negotiate with agents. Your advice would be much appreciated, and please do keep up the fantastic work. Thanks. The answer is 10 percent. Goodbye. No, I'll try and add a little bit more than that for you, Osman. That's my belief it's 10% anyway. And I know, Rob, you think it's around 10% as well. And that's just based on experience. We haven't got data to back that up. But having worked in property now for a, a long time, and of course, running a letting agent, Property Hub Lets, means that I feel fairly confident in the number. And of course, you'll need to add VAT to that. So it'd be 10% plus VAT. So your quotes have come in at 13 to 14%. And you think it's a little heavy. And I'm inclined to agree. If it's not a specialist letting agent, so they're not doing HMOs or offering something a bit different or a bit bespoke, then that is on the higher side. It's possible that where you're looking is London. And in London, for some strange reason, the average is higher than 10%. And you will often see numbers of around 13 and 14%, which actually is something that really baffles Rob and I because rental values in London are a lot higher. So not only are they making more per property, even if it was at 10%, but actually... They're up in it even further. Don't know why it seems to be that way, but it seems that everyone's got on board with it in London, and that's how it plays out. Now, while that is on the high side, it's not also a race to the bottom, because you can find people who'll let your property for you know as low as five percent, possibly even lower. But you then have to ask, what kind of service are you going to get for that level? Because the margins are not huge at ten percent. You know, you've got to run a tight ship to make it work at ten percent. So operating at five percent you're going to have to make a lot of cutbacks. And I doubt that anybody can deliver a good service at that level. But even if you go, right, okay, I'm anchored to 10% now. I want to pay somewhere in the middle. It doesn't mean that all letting agents are created equal. So do your research. Possibly call up as a tenant. See how you're treated, how your experience is. Speak to the property managers, the people you'll be dealing with day in, day out. And see you know, if you get on well. See if you feel like it's a good connection. Are emails replied to in a prompt manner? Do you get callbacks when requested? Those first few interactions will go a long way to tell you how you're probably going to be treated ongoing from that point forward. So the price you pay is a guide. But if I was going to get an incredible service and it was 14%, I'd pay it. Even if someone else was offering me a rate at 5% in the same area, if their service wasn't as high. So 10% is the average. And maybe you want to push for that. And maybe that's what you want to go for. But for me, What's more important and is worth far more is the service that you receive. Because if you want to be hands-off, your letting agent needs to be top draw. And if they're anything less than that, you're not going to be hands-off. You're going to have to put time and effort into managing your property. You're going to have to make regular decisions for the letting agent because they don't have the confidence or experience to make them for you. So focus on service first, then make sure you're getting a competitive rate, and I think you'll be fine. So there you go. Two more questions dispatched. Thank you, Osman. And thank you, Stephen, for sending in your wonderful questions. And if you listening right now have got a question of your own, then give us a call on 013 808 0035 or go to propertyhub.net slash ask and leave us a message so we can send some knowledge your way as well. We'll be back with the Property Podcast, of course, as we always are on Thursday. So we'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. (laughs) 